So the first uh, speaker is Anna Deepa from the University of Buffalo. She's going to tell us about how we can do energy measurements better. Okay. Um, thank you. Hi there. So I'm here to talk about the missing numerator, or in other words, the need for a different perspective when it comes to solving energy management problems for uh, personal mobile devices such as smartphones. Now, it's obvious that mobility is the most important feature for smartphones, right? But these devices are battery powered. So in a way, you can say that the biggest enemy of mobility is charger. Because if, you, if your phone spends most of the time plugged into the wall, then mobility kind of becomes a mute point, right? And then comes in the human factor. All users have this varied charging behaviors, varied app usage behaviors. So when you consider all these three factors, you get a problem called energy management problem. How to manage energy as a resource so that users can use smartphones to the best of its potential. So this is a very important field, and it is a well-researched field as well. Substantial work has been done to find out new, better methodologies to get energy measurements, like collect data from devices in a fast and efficient manner, to design uh, robust power models that predict energy consumption at the per app, per component level, get tools that uh, kind of points out uh, energy anomalies, and so on. So given this rich contribution, we should be able to answer some simple energy consumption uh, related questions that has uh, good influence on energy management decisions, right? Now what's not a simple question? Say for example, comparing apps. Now if you're using an Android phone, then your battery settings will show something like this. App A, App B, two apps running on your phone maybe for uh, roughly the same period. And they consume uh, energy like well, App A consumes 31%, I'd be consumed 21%. Given this information, can you comment something about app A and app B's energy behaviors? For example, energy efficiency, which is more efficient? I would argue that this is a very hard question to answer because we do not know anything about these app A's and app B. They can be from very different categories, like one can be a video client, track, a video track client like Skype, which uses uh, energy intensive components like video, um, high usage of network, and the other can be relative, relatively lightweight app like Google Keep, with relatively uh, low computation and network usage, if any. Now let's make this problem a little bit simpler. Let's not look at the whole app space. Let's take two apps, different apps, from the same category. Then can we make a comment about the energy efficiency given the same value that app A consumes this percentage of energy and app B consumes something else. I'd say it's still very hard because these two apps can belong to say music streaming like Spotify and Pandora, but one app might be playing songs offline while, uh, while the other one is streaming music from using the network. So the usage is different, hence their energy consumption is different. So just based on energy measurement value, it's hard to answer questions like how to compare apps running, uh, same app running on two different devices, or even comparing same app on same user's device for different time intervals is hard to do. And this is why we see this obvious disconnect between researchers and real world users. On one hand, we have the really cool, awesome tools that does accurate energy measurements, but on the other hand, we have real users who are always clearly dissatisfied with the results that they get from currently implemented energy management policies. Now, why is this obvious gap? Maybe because we often think that energy management is equivalent to energy measurement, which definitely is not the case. Energy measurement is an important component of energy management. But managing energy is not just maximizing battery lifetime. It needs to cater to also those uh, situations where you are fine with your battery lifetime. And then, how to then answer the question about how to allocate system resources between different apps so that you get the best performance of the apps that you love the most while compromising on the performance of the apps that you don't really care about. Relating performance to energy is hard if you want to do just based on energy measurements. It's not enough. 
This is where it comes in the missing numerator. We believe that we are missing out on some important information, which along with these energy measurement values can provide some important information about the app. We propose that this missing numerator is basically a measurable value of app. So, be, so if you can measure a value for each app, then along with the energy consumption value, you can decide uh, on the energy efficiency or compute the energy efficiency for, of that app for that particular user at that particular time. Now, how will this numerator help us? It will help us answer the questions we were discussing just right now. For example, comparing apps. Because now you have value for app A, app B. Now we can compute the energy efficiency values for app A and app B. Now it's possible to compare these two apps because they are on the same ground, right? Common ground. But then comes the question, value sounds like a very vague concept. Does it really exist? Let's find out, okay? Um, I make the assumption that most of you are using smartphones and you have uh, multiple apps installed on your smartphones. Let's uh, say you guys are go going to be the energy managers of your phone for today. So you have to allocate some sense of energy quota to all the apps that you want to use in such a way that in one discharging cycle, if your app runs out of the quota allocated to it, then you won't be able to use the app anymore unless and until you charge your phone. Now, will you be able to do that? We're not looking for like the correct or the most optimal distribution of energy quota. What, we try, what I'm trying to uh, say is that will you be able to relatively assign larger quota to certain apps compared to some other apps? For example, I would assign a large chunk of energy to apps that I use most, like Gmail or Facebook, and might ignore apps like some games that I have installed but hardly played. So here we are intuitively assigning value to these apps based on our past experiences or their importance. And based on this sense of value, we can rank the apps from most preferred to least preferred. And most probably, we will be allocating larger quota of energy to these most preferred apps while compared to the least preferred ones. So there is a sense of value uh, of an app that already exists. But then comes the question, how do we measure this value? Unfortunately, that's a very hard question. And we really don't have any one right answer to this. But we thought that, OK, maybe we'll not come up with the correct way to measure value. But we can come up with some simple value measures, right? So we created a value measure, which uh, soon proved to be failed, but I'll come to that. So we said that for us, value is content delivered by app. As in, if your app is delivering video or audio content, then most probably it's more important to you than those apps which don't uh, deliver information via video or audio. So we use screen refresh rate as a parameter to measure video content and audio bit rate to measure audio content. We say that one frame of video gives you more information than one uh, frame of audio. So we assign more weight to uh, video, uh, to screen refresh rate than uh, to audio bit rate. And then we instrumented the Android platform to log all these screen refreshes, uh, bits, uh, audio bits that are being played, energy consumption values at a per app uh, level, and distributed uh, this platform across phone lab users, which is a test bed of having around 250 users using a uh, Nexus 5 smartphone and located at the University of Buffalo. So we collected data over uh, two months, and then we calculated for each of the apps that we saw in the stu entire study four simple metrics. Now, what are these metrics? The first is usage-based metric, which is basically total energy consumption of an app. There is no sense of value here. Then we have the power metric, which is Total uh, energy consumed by the app divided by total running time of the app. Then we have foreground energy efficiency metric, where we only consider the time when the app was in the foreground and the energy consumed by the app when the app was in foreground. Here by foreground, I mean screen foreground. And the fourth one is the content efficiency metric that we were just discussing about. So based on these uh, metrics, uh, metric, we ranked all the apps 
from having, uh, so we got the top 10 apps which have the highest value for each of these metrics, and, top, uh, and bottom 10 uh, apps which have the lowest value for each of these metrics. Let's try to compare these apps. Like, are they similar when you look across different metrics? Apps like Google Search, they consume a lot of energy and uh, they, their consumption rate is also pretty high. Some other apps, uh, though they consume a lot of energy, they were very efficient under uh, our foreground efficiency metric and content efficiency metric. Then we have other apps like YouTube, Twitter, which fared pretty well under uh, both the efficiency metrics. But one thing to be noted here is that YouTube, now it might be the case that YouTube does a good job of efficiently delivering content, but it might be also the case that maybe it was not delivering video pretty well, it was buffering. But if you think about it, the buffering icon is kind of dynamic. It will create lots of screen refreshes. So you, we might have ended up overvaluing this uh, screen refreshes, and that is why maybe YouTube or Candy Crush Saga, which is another game, uh, these have ranked pretty well in, uh, under this metric. Then we come to the bottom 10 apps. Here, uh, apps like these, they have very, uh, they consume uh, energy pretty fast, but over the whole test, right, they have consumed much less energy. Apps like Chrome Browser and WhatsApp Messenger, though they have consumed a lot of energy, they ranked in the top 10 under usage base matrix, they consumed energy at a very lower rate. Then there are other apps which, uh, these apps consumed, uh, energy at a faster rate as well as they didn't do well under the efficiency metric, foreground efficiency metric. Now, under the content efficiency metric, this is uh, interesting to note that the weather apps did really uh, very, did a very bad job. Why? Maybe because they did not necessarily provide dynamic information. They provide the important information, but they're static, so they don't necessarily create a lot of screen refreshes, hence they get undervalued in this metric. Now, the second part of our experiment was the survey that we distributed among our users where we asked uh, them that of the nine apps, which ones are you willing to uninstall to improve your battery life? Three apps were, uh, that were least efficient based on content metric, three apps consume, which consume most energy, and three apps that have been randomly selected from the apps that were installed by the user. And we get this. Let me explain you the graph. The x-axis has the responses. We got 47 responses from 47 users. And the y-axis is the score. Now, how do we decide the score? We give one point if the user says yes to uninstalling an app, 0.5 if the user chose the option maybe, and zero if the user said no to uninstalling an app. Then we compute the aggregate for both the metric, and if one metric has higher score than the other, then we say that it's a win for the former metric. So here we see that we do not have an overwhelming win for the efficiency-based metric, which is basically the content efficiency metric. And hence, we cannot really conclude that uh, our uh, way of measuring value was really good. But it was not completely a failed attempt because we realized some of the mistakes. We learned a few lessons. For example, we realized that our way of measuring video content is not really good. We need to find better ways to compute content because content is really interesting. It gives you, we, still believe that it is a good way to understand how valuable an app possibly could be to a user. But we need to figure out a way so that we can differentiate frames uh, between frames which provide information and which do not provide important information. Then from our approach, we realized most probably simple metrics won't work. We need a complex approach. And also uninstalling apps it might be too much, uh, too extreme of a uh, thing to ask. Even if users agree to your sense of to your you know sense of what is least valuable to them, they may not be willing to remove the app completely. So some other ways to uh, compute value: one can be looking at the background component. So basically, your app usually have a background component that runs periodically and provides you information via notification. Maybe looking at how many times you ignore notification gives you an idea how important that background work was. If it was not important, maybe you can decrease the frequency of that background service. Foreground usage means you want to look only at the time when the user is interacting, how they're interacting, how many times they're launching an app, or how long they were using the app, can give you some insights about uh, the possible value of the app. 
user behavior, profiling how what kind of apps a user usually installs or how they usually interact with different apps can provide you some kind of an idea about what sort of an app they are willing to associate more value with. Now, evaluating this different value measure is also difficult. How will they know which, app, which value measure is better than the other? There is no wrong truth. So we created a framework called Jeweler, which exposes uh, energy management mechanisms from the operating systems to the user space. So basically, you can think of writing energy managers as app, implementing these different sense of value measures. And you can basically deploy in real world and see which one uh, gives you better uh, results. So this brings us uh, to the end uh, of this talk, where we basically try to uh, show you that energy management is not only about energy measurement. It's, uh, we need more information in the form of a per app, per user, temporarily variant value measure in order to make smart, effective energy management choices. And it's a hard problem to solve, and we do not know the right way to measure it, but we believe that this is an important problem to solve, and maybe all of us can brainstorm and think about it, and uh, come up with the right way to measure value. Thank you, and I'll be interested in taking any questions or suggestions. Okay, questions? questions? I forgot to mention that Anudipa is a third year PhD student at Buffalo, by the way. Okay, good. Hal from University of Colorado at Boulder. Uh, so, interesting talk, thank you very much. And there is certainly a lack of like real precise measurements of value and energy and relating them. So my question is about where do you see like eventually when this like becomes a system or an app where do you see it within the, how does it fit within the current ecosystem for Android or uh, iOS? What I mean by the ecosystem, like there's an operating system and there's the App Store or the Google Play. Is it going to be like an app that the user would install that will aid them? Okay, so, uh, so you mean that how this value measure is going to help? So it's kind of, it's like wherever you are right now, making the energy management policies based on uh, just energy measurement values, yeah. be it in an operating system layer or you want to use it as an energy manager app. What we are saying is that just basing it on energy measurement values or consumption values may not be the right way to make decisions about how to allocate your uh, system resources between different apps. For example, I might want my phone to use whatever charge available for, say, Gmail or Facebook, which I use a lot not necessarily for these games which I have installed but never used. Because you often see those notifications, they come, right? Yeah. For this in apps that you have installed long before. Yeah. So they are using, right? They're using the energy to do computation which you necessarily don't want as a user. Yeah, yeah. Let me just clarify my question. Um, what I mean here is that uh, sometimes the information is hidden from the user for a reason. Like, you know, the apps want the, the app developers or the companies that develop the apps might not be happy of feeling like this information. Like building a system that can measure the energy consumption and give the user the option to throttle, let's say, the apps. Um, I, I, I imagine that might be a problem for applications, developers or companies, and also maybe for the operating system itself. So currently, if you want to measure the energy of a certain process, you hook up a, a power source and you get the current drain, because sometimes the API to measure the current drain from the battery is actually uh, taken out. And I think that is taken out for a reason, because it reveals problems with the implementation of the operating system. That's what I think. Yeah, true, but again, uh, what I'm trying to say is that right now, <coughs> your phone does have energy management, right? It's, uh, if it's, uh, it gets conservative, maybe about uh, the frequency in which it will say, uh, wake the Wi-Fi up for a particular uh, app or function or something, right? Yeah. It does the energy management already in your phone. But how does it manage the energy? It's based on these consumption values. Your phone can measure energy consumption, maybe not the accurate one, but it does some sense of energy measurement for the apps that are installed in your phone already. 
and it makes the decisions based on those information. But we are saying that what it is already doing based on just measurement value, because measurement is already there. It's not something that is hidden from the user or hidden from the system. The system is measuring uh, energy consumption of different apps. If you run an app for long, uh, the current uh, Android platform, it also tells you this app is running for too long and it's not being used, so you may want to close it. So the system is using the measurement values. What I'm saying is that just using the measurement values, maybe you're not making the smart choices, yeah, the operating system. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the measurement values are already there. Yeah. What we are saying is that you need a sense of how valuable an app is to the user to make smarter decisions inside yeah. the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, nice work. Uh, Brad Campbell from the University of Michigan. Um, I was curious, so what do you think is the most promising way forward to calculate value? Um, I, think it's, I think the content has got a lot of uh, potential. Like, what kind of information the app is providing? If, uh, uh, what is, uh, you know, but the problem is that, again, with information, we, there are certain apps that will not fall into this like the weather channel or pedometers. It has a very intensive background uh, service, but not necessarily you, you, you open the app a lot of times. So the, uh, if you try to uh, calculate the value just based on content or uh, just based on a uh, number of uh, the time period when it was running, you might be penalizing these other categories of apps. But we believe if you can kind of combine maybe content with uh, the number of times you are launching the app, maybe you're routinely launching the app, maybe you're using the app only once in a day, but if you keep on using it every day, then maybe it's valuable to you. So we do not know the right, right. way to do it. But it, sounds, it sounds like it's not about the one specific thing, yeah. it's about coming up with a way to combine the different things. Sure, because if you think about only one specific thing, you'd, you would often ignore some other categories of apps. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right.